Hello, and a good welcome to my birthday concert. With all my friends here, not all of them personal friends, because in my BBC life, I used to have to look after brass and military bands. But of course, I couldn't possibly invite all the military bands here tonight. There are too many of them. But what better playing for me than a representation from the Royal Military School of Music, Nella Hall, where all the bandmasters are trained, and many bandsmen too. So thank you very much, Colonel Evans, and the Nella Hall trumpeters and percussion. As usual, most band concerts start with a march. Well, we thought of hundreds of marches, but we also thought this is an opportunity to give away a secret. A march which goes around with a composer by the name of H.R. Morton, M-O-R-T-O-N. A few people have discovered it, but perhaps I'd better tell you the truth. It is me, one of my very first marches. So we'll start the program with my march, the medallion. Now for my first soloist, and a solo called Alpine Echoes, which has been very much part of my life. In fact, it was written by Basil Windsor, who again, like the man I just discovered was Morton, was really Mortimer. Basil Windsor's real name was Eli Smith. 
But he didn't feel that was a very good name, so he called himself Bertel Winter instead. And he wrote this particular solo, especially for my Echo Cornet. It had its first performance at a Crystal Palace concert, at the evening concert in 1926, conducted, of course, by my father, Fred, while we were both at Foden's. So I'm asking my colleague and friend, Philip McCann, the principal of of Black Dyke, to play for you now, Alpine Echoes. Please welcome Philip McCann.
Thank you, Philip. Now, next comes an evergreen, a lost chord. I suppose it's always been considered one of the best hundred tunes, but it had its first impact on the brass band world as long ago as 1900 in the Royal Albert Hall when the composer, Sir Arthur Sullivan, himself conducted a mass band concert, and in that program was this very tune, a lost chord. It was sung then by that famous Dame Clara Butt. I wasn't present it was two years before my time, but it's still a well-loved tune, and this arrangement by Gordon Langford makes it even more pleasing to listen to, the lost chord. and what a grand sound. By the way, this assembly of musical friends have come from all over the country to play with me this evening. Many bands are represented, all of which I've been in touch with for over 40 years. The company is made up of players who are now soloists or conductors in their own right. And I'm going to feature one of them now, Gordon Higginbottom. Long after playing in my band, he was graduated to be a member of the well-known James Shepherd Versatile Brass. He's going to play the rondo from Mozart's Horn Concerto, Opus 92. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Gordon Higginbottom.
delighted now to introduce to you one of my special guests, trombone virtuoso Don Lusher. His skill and artistry are known worldwide, but we're proud that in his very early days he too played in a brass band. Although my first meeting with Don was in the times of the great Ted Heath band. He was then a very young man, of course, so was I. However, I'm delighted that he could accept the invitation to join my birthday concert. And here he is to play you something that illustrates his great versatility. Well, judge for yourself as he plays DL Blues. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Lusher. Thank you, Don, and we'll be hearing from you later in the programme. Now, the Prince of Denmark's March is probably better known to most of you as the Trumpet Voluntary. There are many arrangements, even Sir Henry Wood had a go once. But this one that we are going to play now is by Bram Gay, who, as a young boy of 14, succeeded me as Principal Cornet with Fotons. Now, of course, he's an orchestral director at Cop Gun. But myself, having recorded this, 
played it at concerts so many times all over the world. I thought how nice it would be for me to sit and listen to it once. So I've invited Colonel George Evans, who himself was a very fine cornet and trumpet player, and was once leader of my Morris Man in about 1947. I've asked him now to conduct the band and the Nella Hall trumpeters in the trumpet voluntary. Colonel George Evans. Thank you, Colonel George. Now, another nostalgic tune for me is called To a Wild Rose. And I'd like to remember my brother Alex, who was one of the finest euphonium players of his day. And I think all these chaps would agree. The arrangement of this is by another great friend, Eric Ball, who, incidentally, I think is coming up to his 80 years. I make him 79. So with all our four euphoniums, led by John Clough of Black Dyke, I would like to remember brother Alex and send greetings to Eric Ball with To a Wild Rose.
Now, another special guest for me this evening is Elgar Howarth, who is now an international con orchestral conductor. But he started life in brass bands, and he was a brilliant player, of course. Conductor and composer as well. I was privileged to conduct him at the Royal Festival Hall in Dennis Wright's Cornet Concerto many years ago, and also to conduct one of Elgar's early compositions when he was about 17 years of age. But in 1975, I did persuade him to write a test piece for the British Open Championship, a modern work. He called it Fireworks. And he is here to tell you more about it. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Elgar Howarth. Yes, it was about 25 years ago, I suppose, that Harry conducted a thrilling performance of an early piece of mine called Mosaic, and it was also very typical of the man that that long afterwards he had enough uh, confidence, enough faith, and enough uh, vision for the future of brass band music that he asked me specially for a challenging, unusual, virtuoso piece for the September Bellevue Championships of about six or seven years ago. Here is the coda, or the fugato, if you like, of the, of the finale, finale of the piece of fireworks, uh, played by some of the players who perhaps played that day at those championships.
to uh, Don, uh, Gary, as we all know you. Now, welcome back to Don Lusher, who is now going to join the other three trombonists, Maxwell Thornton, Peter Grant and Ian Copland, to play the exciting transcription by Gordon Langford of the Irish Washerwoman. special tunes that mean something to us. And this next piece recalls two important highlights of my life. I played it as my encore at a Crystal Palace Championship concert in 1924 with the Luton Red Cross Band with my father conducting. We might remember here that Luton Red Cross Band won the championship in 1923, the only southern band ever to do it as yet. And we have some representatives of the Luton Band here tonight. I fear, not born at that time, of course. This was, this was also always my mother's favourite tune. And if you recall the wonderful words of the song, There is a lady, sweet and kind, was never face so pleased my mind. I did but see her passing by, and yet I love her till I die. Alas, I can't play it now. But who better for me to ask to play it than Black Knight's principal cornet Philip McCann.
now arrived at the final item. But before we play it, can I please send greetings to Bandsman everywhere? Because without their support over all these years, life would never have been so wonderful as it has been. At this time of year, hundreds of Bandsman are playing in competitions. For example, Southport, Hemsby, Brian Sands, to mention but a few. Also, 100 members of our National Youth Brass Band are on their annual Easter course. We have two of them here tonight, Helen Pollard and Beverly Vaughan, two ladies. So can I send greetings all of you? What else can I say except that everybody here in the studio and all my friends in the band have done everything possible to make this a very happy and proud occasion. We're going to say, reluctantly say good night and hoping we shall meet again soon. We're going to play out with a grand march, which must have been written for a celebration because it's Coronation March from Mayabay's Le Prophet.
tonight, we'd like to present you this, not just as a birthday present, but as a token of all of affection and the whole Brass Band movement for everything you've done during your lifetime for the Brass Band movement. Happy birthday and many more. Thank you very much.